All right, this week we are putting the tape wire in the entire beachside bungalow. Stay tuned and see how easy this is to do. All right, today we are going to start wiring the beachside bungalow. Um, I have my transformer ready. If you didn't watch my video from Tuesday, I had a short video I put up Tuesday morning where I attached the lead-in wire. This is the lead-in wire to the transformer. I talked a little bit about how to choose a transformer and what it does. You need to choose the correct size transformer and I covered that in that post, in that video. I also explained how the junction splice works and the test probe and we tested the system to make sure that this is all ready to go, which it is. So today we're going to talk about a few more parts we're going to use and then I'm going to turn the camera around and we are going to start putting the tape wire and everything into the dollhouse. So it'll be ready to go on to our next step. So tape wire. This is the tape wire I prefer. Uh, it's from Circuit Concepts. I prefer the two color because I it's pretty much idiot proof as far as keeping your lines straight. If you connect the two, if you cross wire the two strips in your dollhouse, you will short out your system. And with this, if, as long as you color code everything, keep it going the same direction, always only connect the blue into the blue, the copper to the copper, you're fine to go. A couple more things we're going to need. You need either brads and or eyelets or grommets. Depends on who you're talking to. These are the brads or the grommets slash eyelets, depending on who's talking about them. Uh, so can I get the camera in a little closer? They are very tiny, but they are, this is what we are going to be using to splice our wire together. When we run our tape wire, whenever we join two pieces of it, I like to make corners and go, go around corners, go from the first floor to the second floor, different things like that, we have to do what's called a splice. That's what these are for. They make the connection between one strip of tape wire and the second strip of tape wire. Also, things we are going to be using. I like to keep a thimble on hand. It helps me to push those in a little bit better. Oh, also, the other option you have is, a, is little tiny brads, and I do have some, and I will use them in places where I need to. I don't like brads. Um, I find I have much better connection with these and they're also a lot easier to handle. So I'm going to try and stick with those. I have this little tool. As far as I can tell, this is called an electrical piercing tool, but I'm not positive because they no longer make one that looks exactly like this. The one that looks closest to it, that's what it's called. I'm not even sure I use it correctly. I've been using it the way I use it for years and I don't even know where, I, where or when I got it. Other little tool we are going to be using is this guy. This will save your sanity. It is a pilot hole punch and it's it's a good length, it feels good, it's it's weighted, it's about the same diameter as a good pen. It's got a couple of hidden compartments in it. This top one I have nothing in, but you could store. I'm thinking that would be a good place to store some of these eyelets so you'd always have them on hand when you're working. Um, but also, it comes apart in the middle. And not only is there a container here, in that container, I have two very important pieces. I have the, the little punch, the little needle tool, basically, and a little tiny drill bit. Both of these come with this. Let me see if I can scoot you down a little better. Those are very, whoops, I very carefully put them right out of range. There they are. Uh, very sharp hole or poker and a drill. So I'm going to back camera back up. Um, more apt to be able to show you what's going on that way. We have a chuck on the end just like you would have on a drill. And these go, either of these will fit in here. You put them in, you screw it tight, and you can use them. We're going to use this a lot. I am going to put this guy back in here before I lose him. Another advantage this handle coming apart if you have a really tight space, you can break this down to the shorter length. So I am going to turn the camera off. I'm going to attach this guy to this guy. 
and I'm going to turn the camera around so we can start putting in the tape wire. I'll be right back. All right, before you start putting the um, tape wire into your dollhouse, you need to know where you're going to put your junction splice. Because that we have to put some tape wire in, put this on it, and plug it in and test it to make sure we're, we are working, um, the junction splice needs to be in a spot that's going to be accessible and easy to get to because that's where this plugs in, and very close to the plug, is our on-off switch. We need to be able to reach this in order to turn the dollhouse on and off, and we want to have it easy to reach. You don't want to have to do some gymnastic move to get your dollhouse lights turned on. Now, it would be best to put it where you don't have to bend your tape wire around a corner, especially if it's going to be handled a lot. I am, however, going to put my junction splice out here and run the tape wire under this trim piece around the edge in here. I am going to be putting a protective piece of wood trim on this edge, so it will be covered and protected, and I don't think anybody will, be, will bang into it too much placed here. Um, and then after everything is in place, I will just paint the junction splice and the tape wire that's out here with the same paint as on the dollhouse. So to facilitate this, I went in with a knife and I loosened my trim just a bit so that I can run my tape wire under it. So I am going to, I'm going to turn the camera off because I need to do some measuring. I'm going to have to stick my head in front of the camera. I just realized I forgot to do this. I am going to make a line. I'm going to extend my one inch from the floor line here, around here, and around to the edge so I know where to lay the tape wire in. And then I'll turn the camera back on and we will start putting tape wire in. All right, I've made a mark here. This, this mark lines up with my line inside, and I've made a mark here, which lines up too. So I am going to take the tape wire and try not to block the camera. And I peeled this, the protective backing off of my tape wire so that I can get it up here and get it stuck to the house. And it's going to come around like that. Now note which direction you've got your tape wire. I have my copper running on the top. So all the way through my house, I'm going to be careful to make sure that the copper side of the tape wire is up. So now we are going to mark where we're going to put this. Let's see, I think I'll do it this way. I am going to make a mark with this. Let's see, is that in? I'm trying to see what I'm doing and not block the camera, which is always an interesting position to be in. Okay. In order to get this marked and drilled into with the uh, pilot hole punch, I'm going to have to move the camera. I'll turn it back on when I get the holes made. All right, this is installed, and yes, I know where I band-aid because I managed to cut myself on that darn thing. So be careful of your junction splice. Those little nails are sharp, and I did have to pull out a hammer. Um, probably did not make my neighbor upstairs very happy, but that's okay because he's been dragging furniture across his living room all morning long. So I'm going to plug this into the transformer, and we are going to see if we have light. Yes, we do. So, after every time you pound into this, you want to check it. So, now unplug. Do not leave this plugged in if you're going to be working on the wiring. You don't want to short out your transformer. I don't think you will, but just to be safe. So, I am going to turn the camera off long enough to move the dollhouse around so I can reach inside of it now. All right, this is going to be really tight quarters. I'm hoping I don't knock the camera over, um, and I will have to move you a couple of times. But now I've got this. I'm going to try and get it close to centered on that line I drew. Now you want to keep as few splices in your tape wire as physically possible. So we're going to run a line all the way along this wall, over to here, 
and I'm going to cut it at the door. Then I'm going to make a splice to go up, over, and down, and then we're going to continue around. So I'll show you the first part of this and I'll probably turn the camera off until I get to that splice. But I'm just running it along. I'm pulling the, the backing, protective backing off of the tape bar as I go. And I'm trying to make as few wrinkles as I can. Uh, we're already going to have a challenge with the, with the uh, eyelets instead of the brads. The brads are easier to cover. So they're a challenge already. So I want as little wrinkling as I can get here. And hopefully I'm not blocking the camera. Uh, let's untwist this. But as tempting as it would be to cut this and go around the corner, we don't want to do that. Because that, every time you make a splice, that's a chance for a future problem with your tape wire. That's a chance for it to fail later. And most of the time, when you have an issue with your wiring at a later date, you go in, you go to, to turn your lights on, and they don't work, most of those issues can be traced to one of those splices that you made. So the fewer those there are, the better off you're going to be. So I'm going to turn you, I'm actually going to set you, sorry about that, can I, there. I'm on a weird little tripod here. Okay, you can kind of see the door. Hopefully you can see enough what I'm doing. Because this is not one of those parts of the video where I can go back and retape. so you guys can see it as it happens. Grab my scissors. Can you see? Kind of. There we go. So I apologize for the moving around. Um, that's going to happen here. Now, I think rather than doing the splicing right away, I'm going to go ahead and do this strip next. That way I can just get that part out of the way, get it done. Now, remember, you want to make sure you are starting going the right direction. Now I'm going to go all the way to the door opening, even if I end up cutting off part of it later. I'm using the back of my hand a lot. Now I recommend if you're not doing a video of your build, that when you get this tape wire in and get this finished, go ahead and take a photograph of it and save it someplace safe so that you can refer to that later if you need to. Now I'm just going to cut this off even with the front, with the back edge of the house. And I'm going to turn the camera off so I don't knock you over and then I'll try to find you a better place for going around the sea to go around the door. All right, so I have that all trimmed off, and we are now ready to put the two. I think my lights so are going to block my light. Hopefully, I won't block all the light. And I cut these long. I would rather waste a little bit than be short. So I'm just going to. And I'm going to try and put these fairly close to that doorway. Kind of. Again, centering on the pencil line I've drawn previously. Whoops. I managed to tip over my light. Okay. Now, not only does this continue our tape wire around the door so we can pick it up on the other side, it's also how we are going to wire the front porch light. The front porch light will be the only light we put in before we wallpaper because the front porch light will be wired underneath our wallpaper. I'll we'll actually be drilling a hole through the front wall for the wires to come through, and then they will be wired to one of these strings of lights. Now, I am going to, I'm going to do it this way. I have to remember in the future that this is how I did it. This is why I want to take a photograph when I'm done. And I'm going to, Tip my light over again. 
To light the inside of here, by the way, I am using that little LED light that I showed in my Dollar Tree haul a couple of months ago. And it is, I think it's helping with the, with the video, but it is helping immensely with just me being able to see in the dollhouse while I'm doing this. All right, I'm gonna cut a piece about that long. And now I get to play, peel the backing off. All right, and now is going to be the time we are going to be making a splice. So be sure to put your tape wire the same direction. Once again, copper up. And now I'm going to turn, I'm gonna, well, maybe I can do the first one over the camera. If you're using brads, I recommend doing two brads in each piece of wire, but only draw, drill through the two coppers. I see anything that I'm doing. I'm hoping you're seeing. Um, let me turn the camera off and move you to a little bit better position. All right, I'm hoping you can see this. So I have, I'm drilling a hole through the, where the two coppers. Every once in a while this little Chuck Key thing decides to um, loosen up on me. There we go. I think I've gone far enough. And now I'm going to drill through the two of the other two colors. Blue. I guess we're calling this blue. I don't know. Do we call it blue? What color do we call this other line of tape art? Now I'm not going to make you watch me drill all of these holes, but I want you to see the first two. All right. Now, the way I do this is, where's the camera? I get my breath, my eyelet, Doing this with a band-aid on my finger is not fun. I know I'm out of camera range right now. I'm just trying to pick up one of these little eyelet things. All right, got the eyelet there on the tip. Hopefully the camera's picking up what I've got I'm doing there. Now I'm going to use this tool and I'm going to press in and that did not go in. Hold on. Of course it didn't go in since the camera's running. If I did that without the camera running, it would probably went in the first time all the way where I wanted it. Okay. No, that was not good. All right. There we go. That one is in and it is flush, or as flush as these get. Now I'm picking up the uh, the next eyelet. I got it also on. I had it on. Working with a band-aid on one finger is not helping my coordination. Can you see? Can you see? Hopefully you can see. Where's that hole? Okay. And you'll kind of feel when it hits the inside. Now, I am going to back you up just a tiny bit. I'm going to reach around and plug in the junction splice. Okay. I'm going to get my tester. And first we're going to test. We know that this one should be fine. Let's turn this on. Okay, so we know that this light is lighting. So now we need to test up here where we have joined it. If I've done it correctly, I have. All right, so now let's turn the camera up. I am going to do the exact same thing on this one, two, and three, and I'm going to test after every one. When that's done, I'll be right back. All right, I have all the splices done, and I'm going to show you it works. <laughs> so now we are going to actually move to the top floor, and I'm going to run the tape wire around there. So I'm going to pause the camera and move you again.
All right, for ease of keeping my tape wire oriented the right way, I'm actually not going to film the first part of this because I am going to start right here with my tape wire and run it around the bathroom, and then I'll show you how I come into the bedroom. But I want to make sure I keep the tape wire going the same direction. So I will see you when I get to the bedroom. All right, I went around the bathroom. So now I'm going to come into the bedroom area, and all I'm going to do is carefully wrap this. This doorway, I'm hoping to actually put a door in here if I can find the one I want for a price I want to pay. Um, but now I'm just wrapping it around here. I'm wrapping it nice and tight so that it stays in contact and doesn't take up too much space. And then it's more, less apt to get damaged from handling the dollhouse if it's nice and tight and firm against that wall. I'm going to tear this off. All right, now we are coming to this corner. We are almost done with this portion of the dollhouse. Now really fold it into that corner because if you don't, you're going to have problems when you go to wallpaper. You might accidentally um, cut your tape wire. I actually did that one time. I didn't have my tape wire all the way at the corner. Oops, you can't see through my hand. I didn't have my tape wire all the way to the corner. And I went to put the wallpaper in, and when I pushed the wallpaper up and s increased it into the corner, I actually snapped my tape wire. So I had to take the paper all the way off and start over on that room. So be careful. Learn from my former mistakes. Now it's just a matter of following. So I'm going to go around, and I'm going to bring the tape wire all the way to this this edge and then I'll come back and we'll splice the top to the bottom. Alright so I have put in the vertical run of tape wire. This is what will join the bottom row that we already have wired into the transformer into the junction splice and it's going to tie into or splice into that run that we put on the top floor. So I went ahead and put these in because it was just impossible to do it with the camera in front of me. I just couldn't reach and put you in a position where you could see. So let's make sure first that I haven't messed up. Yep, that still works. I always retest the part that I know worked before I test the new part that I've just attached or spliced on. So let's see if I can... Come on. Please work. I'm not getting it. That, yep, it works just fine. So I am going to put the two brads in on the top floor, and then I will show you that and the one last piece of tape wire we're putting in. All right, I moved you back a little bit so you can get the whole effect of the dollhouse. Let me turn this light around so you can see where I made the connection there. Let me show you that it works. I did test it already because I did another connection, which I've also tested. See, we have light. Those two are working. Over here, I have a run of tape wire on the floor. I'm trying to figure out a way to hold this so that you can see. There, that one works too. That, this floor is going to be covered. This is going to be the bathroom, and I don't want to put a wood floor in the bathroom. I don't like that look. So I've got an idea what we're going to do for that. A couple of weeks from now, we'll start making the floor for there. But I will wire the ceiling fixture for the kitchen area through the, through the ceiling from downstairs up into this floor and wire it right here. So I'm hoping that's a good placement. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did and you liked the video, push the like button. Be sure and leave a comment. That's, those two things help so much to get YouTube to suggest the video to other people that might like it. And I'd really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you know when I put out a new video. Be sure and check the blog post for more photos because I got, was able to get photos in a lot closer than I could get the video. Um, and check the Facebook page out. That's still the quickest and easiest way to get a hold of me. And I will talk to you later. Bye.